Okay, so this is Pi Entertainment System, and I tried to do a video on this uh, a couple of weeks ago, but I couldn't get the download to work. So if you have a look, and I'll put a link in the description to all of this, but if you have a look on the installation part here, uh, and then scroll down, you can see there's a beta torrent for Raspberry Pi 4, uh, and if you scroll down as well, it talks about Berry Boot. I downloaded the Berry Boot image, couldn't get it to work. I tried to download the beta torrent version, uh, a couple of weeks ago, and I couldn't find any seeds. Uh, it just wouldn't download. It would it, it downloaded the little torrent file, but then it wouldn't download. But I tried again yesterday, and it downloaded fine. So I've now installed it, and it is on my Pi. Um, it's uh, the website is great. Loads of information. Very very simple to use. Incredibly easy to add ROMs. So when you first get it, uh, you'll it won't look like this. Uh, it will look uh, very different because you won't have anything from. Uh, home between home and ZX Spectrum, uh, you won't have anything there. Uh, this is only happens when you install the ROMs, and to install the ROMs, it is super easy. So I'll just switch to myself on uh, Ubuntu to show you how to install a ROM. Okay, so I have a single ROM on my desktop, which is a ZX Spectrum ROM. Uh, I'm going to pop my SD card containing Pi Entertainment System into a USB adapter and plug it into this computer. And you can see that three partitions show up. So we've got boot, root, and data. The one we want is data, so click on that. And you'll see, and this works the same on Windows, on Mac, or, or Linux, whichever way you're doing it. Uh, so I've got a PES folder, Pi Entertainment System folder. I've got a ROMs folder. And here we go, I've got ZX Spectrum. So let's open that up. And we'll copy and paste the folder into there, or you could drag it whichever way works for you, uh, and that's it. So now we can eject the USB stick and pop it back into the Pi, and you'll see what happens. Actually, before I do that, uh, on the PlayStation side of it, if you go back into the PES folder, you'll see there's one called BIOS, and I put the PlayStation BIOS into this folder. Uh, now there's two here, I wasn't sure if the zip one or the bin one uh, was the one to do, but one of them works because it's recognised it. So let's put that back in the Pi. So then once you've installed that ROM, uh, we're back on the system, you can see that it's not showing up at the moment, but if I go into settings, and then update games, you can either do it by individual system, uh, so if you if you do begin scan straight away, it will just uh, scan all the uh, the folders and the systems and add them in. But I know that all I've got is a ZX Spectrum file, so let's ha hit on that and then begin scan. And you can see that it has found one added, five updated. Don't know what that is, um, but it's added one. So if we go back and I'm using a wired Xbox 360 controller and keep going back and then go into ZX Spectrum. There you can see uh, Dynamite Down has been added. Oh, it's weird because uh, that, so that has added cover art now, uh, which I didn't have before. And on some of the other ROMs, I haven't really gone into adding cover art. Oh, it is fine. Yeah, it has gone through and it's found certain things on there. You can probably manually update, but super easy to be able to add ROMs. The fact that you can take your uh, SD card with Pi Entertainment System on it, put it into an adapter, put it in your computer and just drag it into that uh, PES ROMs folder uh, is, is a really nice way of doing it. Uh, so I've plugged in my wired Xbox controller and uh, if I want to use that it's very very straightforward, there's no configuration. It also works with the PlayStation 3 and a PlayStation 4 controller as well. You can see the little cover art look for the systems, that, that wasn't there before, so it's uh, part of what it's done is it's updated it at some point. Okay, so let's try some games. Uh, a few things I've changed on this, uh, in the config.txt I've added the Force 1080 because the system would always default to 4K when it was playing games, and I think that would impede the performance. Um, but I've also uh, overclocked to 2 gigahertz, and I'll put that in the description. So first of all, I thought I'd try PlayStation. Click on that. Click on All Games, so it shows you all that's there. And you can see if you've 
in the case of this, it's recognized the game and it's put all the description and everything on there. So let's click on that. And my Xbox controller is all pre-configured and everything's working fine. I've installed the BIOS for PlayStation. It will work without the BIOS files, but I found that it, was, uh, it wasn't as smooth, it wasn't as quick. It's going to have better compatibility with the official BIOS files. Single player. Now I like to change my camera angle. That's nice of him to move out of my way. Nice cautious approach there, that. Yeah, you can see the speed is fine. Uh, it works perfectly well. Nice and responsive. Oh, that was a bit dodgy. <laughs> Can I stay? Oh, I'm, I'm, I'm at the back of the pack now, look. But yeah, PlayStation works perfectly fine. I've played this before and, uh, and it was great. So press home and start and press home and start again to exit out. It doesn't always take you back into this screen, but in this case it did. So another thing that I saw that was really interesting, uh, if you see on the top here, uh, it says, if you sign up for an account at retroachievements.org and enter your details into your PES.ini file, PES will show your achievements here. So uh, that's something a little bit different. I think it works in RetroArch as well, but I'm not sure. Um, but uh, let's try another couple of games. Now I got asked to try Thrust on Commodore 64. So let's give that a try. There we go. And the C64 seems to load in pretty much real time. Uh, it, it, I thought it had crashed at first because a lot of emulators just kind of jump straight into games and, and you don't have any loading screens or anything. But if you wait on the Commodore 64, uh, it seems to sort itself out. So here we are. I haven't configured the controller at all. It looks like it's just working, uh, which is really nice to see. And I'm just pressing the A button on my Xbox 360 wired controller and it's letting me go in. But uh, am I missing something here? Run, stop, start game. Is there... If you press select, you get this menu up. Ah, virtual keyboard, look. Ah, run, stop on the left here. I didn't have a Commodore 64, I had a Spectrum. No, I used to really like Thrust anyway uh, on various different systems. Oh, my joystick's not working. This is. Oh, I've only got. Oh, I've only got one rotation which is just left. I wonder why that is. So I can probably get away with this. Okay, uh, and maybe I need to configure the controller because all I can do is rotate left and I'm sure I'm supposed to be able to rotate right as well. And the right, what was shoot? When I press left, occasionally it shoots. I wonder if I've got keyboard controls. So I've got A and S to rotate and I can use my joystick A button to thrust. So at least I can move around a bit. But that is, apart from the control, oh crikey, that shot was fast, wasn't it? Apart from the controls being a bit messed up and needing to look at that, I, uh, that's obviously working fine. So let's quit out of that. Can we shoot that guy? No, I, can't, I just can't find the shoot button. So let's start and home button and go all the way down to the bottom and there's an exit button. Quit emulator. And that hopefully will take us back in. Yeah, it does. So let's try ZX Spectrum. And, uh, and a great game I had back in the day. And I'm sure this was £1.99. 
um, back in the day and uh, I saw someone else had done a YouTube video on it and it is just a really good really good game really good for its time really enjoyable still and I played a little bit of it yesterday and it was still enjoyable yesterday so I've got to work out what button so you've got to aim a bit before right it's the B button to shoot not A so obviously you've got to think about the time it takes to <laughs> come on there we go we've got one Terrible. Have we got enough time to get this one? Oh, too soon. No. Oh. Sometimes simple games like the fact that you've got to you've got to anticipate oh, straight through the middle of them makes it more enjoyable. What do I need to get? I've got I've got like three circles there, haven't I? Oh, look at that! Right, so the horse racing, horse riding. Oh, good start. You've got uh, left and right to kind of accelerate. How am I going to get over that? That wasn't very kind, does it? Put me right there. Uh, so let's do practice. Uh, ride to cane. You've got to go really close. Oh. It is quite unforgiving. Shoot out. Oh, yeah. Oh. Oh. <laughs> Get it on him. Right, there we go. That's about it. Train ride. Can't remember exactly what. What what was I supposed to do there? Was I supposed to jump and then jump again maybe? And that's level 1, which I'm assuming is the easiest level. Let's go slow. Oh, so you've got to go slow between... Oh, oh, you don't have to jump the cacti. Oh, I thought I was going fast enough for that. So you can see that, uh, and then let's go back to the ride to cane and see if we can actually make it one more time. I don't know what's going. Something's crashed. Oh, so you don't need to be going that fast. It's a big jump. Come on, let's get me to Kane. It's quite a long level, isn't it? Uh, oh, I see the mileage is there, look, 6.6 miles. Good job I didn't have to jump over that, I nearly did. And I'm there, and then it gets you into the shootout. So, yeah, I, I just remember really liking this at the time. It's quite, it's quite a nice, <laughs> terrible firing. Right, so start and select to quit, and select also gives you a virtual keyboard on Spectrum. So the last thing to... Uh, I was going to try it was N64 because when I first started using this it was on 4k I don't know if I've already mentioned this but uh, I've moved it over to uh, to 1080 for the desktop because 4k always tends to hamper the pie that bit too much uh, and I couldn't get the N64 to work at any decent speed and it was also a bit weird on controls as well but let's see what happens now that it's at 1080 rather than trying to do it at 4k yeah, it's very, very jumpy and skippy on the audio. New career. You never know, when it gets into the game it might be alright. And this is beta, um, and the PSP version isn't working in the beta. Um, so, uh, and the, the developer even says that he hasn't got a Pi 4 himself. Oh. Yeah, I'm not, 
My controller's... Oh well, yeah, speed's alright. My controller's not quite configured right. Because it's, it's drifting to one side, but I'm sure that can be fixed. But yeah, from a point of view of, of speed, that seems to be running quite nicely. Apart from this weird drift on the controller. So anyway, Pi Entertainment System, I'm pretty impressed really. It's another another uh, multiple emulator system. There's several on there. There's RetroPi, RetroArch, uh, and also Mednafen, uh, multiple uh, emulators in one system. And, uh, and I really like them. So thanks very much for watching. Please like and subscribe.